Hey YouTube, this is We All Juggle Knives with a review of this Estwing knife. Yeah, did you know Estwing makes knives? They do now. This is what they're calling their 6-inch bladed Bowie knife. That's how they pronounce it in their video. All right? You see the handle on this. It is a skeletonized handle, organic, extremely contoured, perhaps too much so. It's very thick. The entire knife is made from one solid piece of steel, by the way, like all of Estwing's other tools. I have beat this up severely, and you will see the highlight reel. So you see it has a finger groove going all the way around. It also has a kind of a weird extension at the pommel, which you can see how that curve can fit a palm. But it's definitely not what they call a neutral handle at all. It's just extremely contoured. There is the blade, 6 inch blade, they also have a 4 inch model, and they have a 6 inch and a 4 inch Tonto, and Tonto is how they're pronouncing it on the video that I saw from them. All right, and I think this might have a clear coat, I know Estwing tools have an anti-rust clear coat on them, at least my carpenter's hatchet from them does. Now the way this came, they say it's hand sharpened. Well, it might be you know, hand sharpened on a, gri on a grinder because mine had a really large burr when I got it. This is footage I took before using and abusing after I removed the burr. But yeah, it basically had a lip of metal overhanging one side. That's what a burr is. And a burr will create more friction, so they should have removed it at the factory, but I removed the burr. Now, Estwing uses a mid-carbon tool steel. I have heard from the forms that it's 1055 on all its tools, so I'm assuming this is as well. Here is the sheath. It's a pretty low-budget sheath. You see the, uh, the belt loop there. So it's basically just a nylon sheath. You see it has a uh, cross strap. It does hold it in. Right, it's got a snap closure. And it does have a plastic insert inside there. But, I mean, aside from the insert, it's almost as, uh, as cheap construction as they could possibly do. You may be wondering how this blade got beat up so badly. Well, just doing my job. Let's roll in the highlight reel of different things that I did to this S-Wing knife. Alright, here it is batoning. It's kind of a chunky knife, so it was actually really good at splitting pieces of firewood. Now I would prefer to baton with a longer knife because there's just uh, a lot more area to get a good solid hit on with your baton, but I'm not reviewing a longer knife. You could also just split wood with like a hatchet, but again I'm not reviewing a hatchet. I do love my S-Wing hatchet though, it will make a cameo later. But this is a very durable knife when it comes right down to it. I mean it's uh, it had no problem splitting this wood. Alright, and those are my butcher's gloves. Not really needed for this, but I'm trying to get in the habit of wearing them more often, just so I don't have a thousand million scars by the time I'm 60. But you see that wood? See how knotty and twisted that wood is? Now, I don't believe batoning is necessarily the ultimate or any sort of vital survival task, but it is an easy way to put some usage on the knife for you guys. All right, there's some sped up footage, just uh, debarking a branch, cutting into it, making some shavings. It did all right on that. All right, here we're murdering a log. You know, but as far as those shavings, you know, a thinner knife would have done better like a Mora. But again, I'm not reviewing a Mora. Now, as far as this, I'm not trying to break that tip, okay? Someone was like, you're supposed to twist it side to side. I'm not trying to break the tip. I was just testing the grip. All right, and here I am just hitting it really hard into that log. And again, I'm not trying to chop a log in half with a small knife. I'm just seeing if the edge will chip or if the edge will get damaged from this uh, semi-abusiveness. All right, so what did we do? We murdered a log. We split some firewood. Uh, we made some shavings. I did a lot more with this. I mean, you saw how beat up this thing is, but take my word for it, I tested it sufficiently that I can at least say it's a super durable knife. Very durable. Does that mean it's the greatest knife ever? No, but it's like a baseline from which we can move forward. There it is with my favorite S-Wing tool of all time probably, right? My carpenter's hatchet. 
I've had that hatchet for so many years. I've used it, abused it, resharpened it numerous times. You know, Estwing is really a legendary company, very popular among my subscribers, right? Very popular among all any blue collar workers in the United States, at least. There you see their machete. Now with this knife and their machete, they've kind of gone a little bit uh, just uh, way off the field, actually. It's clear they're, they're just trying to design things that look a lot different from everyone else's blades. And at that, they succeeded, but they say this is an outdoor utility knife. I don't know about that. I mean, all I can say is it's, it's a durable knife. You know, just because I review something doesn't mean I recommend it, even from a legendary company. So what were some drawbacks of this knife? Well, the sheath was pretty cheap. The handle, it's nowhere close to a neutral handle, right? So it just locks you in to kind of one grip. Uh, it had a burr on the edge. It's also just a bit of a chunky knife, and it's just a weird, unconventional knife. I mean, it's got stiff competition from all the different Scandi-type knives, and it also has stiff competition from the more tried-and-true American designs, such as uh, your average 6- or 7-inch clip point K-bar hunting knife or K-bar military type knife. I mean, there's so many things you could use as an outdoor utility as a camp knife. It's like, why would you use this? I really can't answer that question. If I had it to do over again, I would have gotten the, what they call the Tonto 6-inch version, just because that little choked-in portion uh, at the base of the blade kind of annoys me. I thought it would be wider from looking at the pictures, but once I got it in hand... I think I would prefer the the completely straight edge up to the sub tip on their Tonto, and it also looks like it has a little bit better uh, thumb ramp on that one too. So yes, a mixed review. Um, I would say, you know, buy one of their Carpenter's Hatchets. That's the one I can recommend, and a lot of their other tools. I'm still not really sure about their knives and machetes. I mean, they have yet to be proven. They need to demonstrate why they made them as they did. And this knife also came with a warning to not use it for anything but cutting. In other words, they basically say don't baton with it. Which is funny because batoning was one of the things that this was actually best at because it is chunky, but they said don't do it, so I quote unquote abused the knife. It did fine. I could sum this up by saying it's an ultra durable knife but there's really no reason to carry this over any of the Scandi designs, any of the traditional American designs like a K-Bar hunting knife or any of the overbuilt American designs that you can get from SE or from Ontario or for from Rat. So yeah, that's the uh, good, the bad, and the ugly. This has been We All Juggle Knives. Hope you enjoyed the review. I'm out.